Okay, good evening. Um, I'm about to go and take the camera shop out, check the weather forecast, and weather forecast is looking good for this evening. So um, I thought it would be a really good idea to give a bit of a, a run through of all the kit that I take with me out into the field um, so you can see everything that I use and, and we can do that in the in you know in the in the safety of the home rather than doing it in the woods where I've got to be a bit quiet. So I'm just gonna go through a few things now and show you some of the things that I take with me for setting up my camera trap. Um, first up, camera. Uh, I take out a Canon 450D, um, also known as the Canon Rebel, with the 18 to 55 kit lens on it. Um, cheap camera, very cheap camera, reliable, very good standby mode, um, and obviously you want to be putting something out there that you're not bothered about losing. If someone was to, to steal it, or if the the weather seal of your of your um, of your box failed, and, and obviously it got wet inside, and you lost your camera, you want to, you don't want to be putting out a full frame thousand pound camera. So something like that is ideal. And we've got um, the camera housing. This is the camera housing that I've built. Um, this is a similar to a Pelicase 1300, about the same size. Uh, but it's from a company in Leeds called CNC, they're much cheaper. Uh, and as you can see there, I've got a bit of soil piping and I've um, drilled a hole in the front of the pelly case that's a little bit bigger than the soil pipe, slid that in and then I've sealed it with sealant. And then inside, if you can see that, I've put um, a filter, a UV filter as a window just to seal it all up. Then inside you can see there's the, the, the plug and play phone. So I've pulled out all the phone to fit the camera inside and then just underneath there is the receiver, uh, the wireless receiver that I'll plug into the camera. So the camera <coughs> sits inside there, okay? The wireless receiver plugs into the side and then I have a wireless transmitter on the top of that to fire out some of my flashes. And then that all seals inside there so it's completely weatherproof. And then all I do is get one of these little Manfrotto uh, tripods and, I, and I, I screw those into the bottom to give me some legs on which to stand it on. I used two of these Monfrotto uh, tripods, as you can see. I've sprayed them all up, so they're camouflaged, hopefully blend in a little bit. Um, and then into one of those, onto one of those Monfrotto uh, tripods, I attach this. This is the thing that makes everything happen. So this is the Camtraptions uh, version three wireless motion sensor. It's a PIR uh, motion sensor, which means it's a passive infrared motion sensor. Um, so it detects any change in heat, a heat signature that moves in front of it, at which point it fires a signal to the camera to, to fire. Very similar to the kind of uh, motion sensor that you'd get on your uh, security lighting outside. However, it's a little bit more sophisticated. It's got two little windows which go on the outside here, so we can narrow the beam of which the, the, the motion sensor works. And then we've got some dials on the side there for a luminosity control, a timer control, um, and a sensitivity control, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail in a different video. So that's our motion sensor. Um, I also take with me uh, a little bag containing all manner of security. So in here we've got padlocks, we've got steel cable, um, all different things to just kind of add a little bit of security. It wouldn't stop somebody if they really wanted to take it, um, but it just stopped that opportunist who's walking by who might steal it. Then we have my flashes. Um, I've tried a number of flashes. The one that I'm favouring at the moment, the, the best one out there is the Nikon SB28, but they're quite expensive to get hold of. I found the Nikon SB24 um, does exactly the same job and I'm picking these up for around £30 for, per item. Um, and at £30 per item, it's giving me everything I, I want it to give me. What you find with modern um, flashes and the uh, Wayangu ones that was recommended to me from Amazon, um, they don't go into standby mode. What they do is they turn off after a period of time. So these will go into standby mode and sit in that standby mode for days and days and days on a set of batteries. So I really recommend either the SB28s are the ones to go for, everybody recommends those. But the SB24 has not let me down so far. And as you can see on the back here, it's got a little standby mode 
and that works really, really well. So SB24s. Now, obviously, if you're putting flashes out in the field, you need some way to trigger them. Um, and I use the cam traptions, receivers, and transmitters. So I've got a load of those that need to go out into the field. So we've got those. Um, and then, obviously, you need some kind of housing to put your flash units in. So what I've been using is there are lots of different designs on the internet, um, but I've built my own, and I've built my own out of a sandwich box. So if I show you with this one here, we've got a sandwich box, we get my flash, sits inside the sandwich box, um, the lid goes on the top of it, clips in, again, I've spray painted these camouflage so that you can they kind of blend in a little bit, leaving a window for the flash to come out of, and then I've attached one of these clamps um, onto the side of them just through putting a little hole through and a bolt on the opposite side so I can attach those to whatever I want in the field. Now, in terms of what I want to attach it to, I've tried a number of things. I put those clamps on with the idea of attaching them into trees, uh, onto branches and things like that. The only trouble is, as I found out uh, at cost, is that when it rains, the branches obviously become heavy with the rainwater on the leaves and the branch uh, kind of sags down and the direction of your flash is missed onto where you, you want it to be. So I found those a little bit of problematic. So what I've done to overcome that is I've just got some studio poles. Um, these are cheap ones off Amazon. Uh, and what I do is, is I deploy these, put them up nice and high, and then you can attach, I'll show you on this one, okay, you can attach these straight onto, onto these poles and it means that I can be really creative with my flashes and know that those flashes are going to be exactly where I left them in terms of the point that they're placing uh, that their light onto. So um, again, cheap because we want them to go out in the field. The only problem with it is, is that they stand out like a sore thumb. Now I'm not too worried about standing out like a sore thumb for someone to notice them because actually if somebody walked past this, they would trigger the motion sensor and the flashes would go off. At that point, they've seen it anyway. Um, but what these are a bit problematic is, is animals see them. And, and the animals see them, and the last time I deployed the, the camera, it took three nights before anything came near them. And I think these are the things that kind of deterring them and moving them away from the area. So I have two of those poles. Okay, what else do I have? Uh, batteries, bloody hundreds of batteries. You need batteries. You need lots and lots of batteries to be able to put into the field. And then there's one other thing, which I'll just bob and get and you'll see. And here it is, the last piece of kit that I take with me, and that's my trail cam. Uh, now I set my trail cam up for two reasons. I set the trail cam up as a little bit of security, it's acts a bit like CCTV on all my kit, so it can keep an eye on it. Um, so if, I get, if someone does tamper with it, I'll mess with it, I've got some video footage of them. But the other reason that I set it up is it allows me to watch how the animals are interacting with my kit. As I mentioned before, the, the um, posts that I put my flashes onto, I could see animals coming into the area and then backing away once they'd seen the posts. I wouldn't have had that piece of information as I'd have not set my trail cam up. This is a Victor one, I got it from Amazon, I think it was about 50 pounds. Um, lots and lots of valuable uses to one of these. And if you haven't got one already, just for setting up in your garden and seeing what comes in your back garden, um, to kind of give you the ideas for, for photographing them, worth every penny as a purchase. So if you haven't got one of those, get one of those. Uh, then there's just a few other little bits and pieces, lots of waterproof bags for everything to go into, uh, really just for, for lugging it all into the field, a big rucksack for taking it out there, um, and that's about everything really. Uh, I take some scrim netting to put over the top of uh, the camera housing and the, the uh, sensor to just give it a little bit of camouflage again not necessarily from people people set it off the flash is going to tell them where everything is but more from the animals that are passing through so that it kind of blends into the into the background so that's the kit we'll get it out in the field we'll have a look and see what it looks like so here we go off out to put the camera out we've had a break in some bloody awful weather and hopefully we should get a good night and a good chance to get some images of the badger and hopefully maybe the fox so we'll just have to see how we go
grass. I've just disturbed two nesting pheasants. It would have made a great image. But I never bring the camera with me. I've got the camera trap because there's just too much equipment to carry. Um, and you, you can tell, it's always the times you see the best. The best wildlife is when you haven't got your camera. You can see from all this in my back and the weight of it and carrying the camera trap in my hand is a lot of kit. Far too much to be then carrying a camera on top of that. As you can see, this is the location in the woods. We've got a lovely little stream running through. Lots and lots of opportunity for compositions, some really nice compositions. Um, it's just a case of picking them and then hoping that the animal comes to the area that you want it to. Um, Okay, so here we have it. This is the setup. That's my fill flash up on the top there. Camera trap and sensor, I'll show you from the front. Key light and a pole on the bank. Composition, hopefully, a little bit of reflections in the water and a nice V shape on either side to frame the subjects in the middle of it. Ambient light will come through, but very little. And the real key here is that the ambient light will not be behind the subject because that creates ghosting in the images. So hopefully we should get some nice images. And then finally, just so you can see from the front, we set up nicely camouflaged, sensors to the side, camera box ready to go. And then the final thing that I do, as I have mentioned, little cam trail on there. And I also put a little sign just to say, please do not mess with the equipment while I've studied taking place with my mobile number. And my thought with this is most people that come into a woods probably are not the kind of people that steal equipment. And so hopefully if they see that, they'll see it's a wildlife study and maybe just leave all my kit alone. Maybe, fingers crossed. So that's the setup. It's all there ready to go. Just now for me to pack away and leave the area so it's all nice and peaceful for the animals to come in. I've done this four times now. It still feels really strange leaving your kit. I check, double check, triple check, just to make sure everything is as it should be before I walk away and leave it. And uh, fingers crossed, it's all there in the morning. It's not on a public footpath. There's no right of way through here. It's on private land. Um, I've got permission from the farmer to be able to set up this equipment in this land. But on my trail camera, I have got footage of people walking the dogs through the area, which to be honest with you is a little annoying, especially we've got an active badger set and we get people with dogs all through the area but that's always the danger with camera trapping and like I said I think most people who are coming into this area are not the kind of people who are going to steal a camera trap they're the kind of people who are walking the dogs and going to look at it with interest and I think if they see my sign that interest will lead to Leave it alone because it's obviously doing something important. So, fingers crossed that's okay.
So finally, I just want to talk about settings, camera settings. And um, the camera's set to bulb mode. So in daylight, the shortest shutter speed, I think, is uh, one second exposure. And obviously, that exposure will go to whatever length it needs to, depending on the ambient light. The cam traction sensor decides the ambient light, reads that, and then sends a message to the camera to set the shutter speed. So the camera's set in manual. Um, I have the aperture set to f11. I have the ISO number set to 800 and that seems to give me some okay images. Um, my flashes again are on manual mode both of them with the cam traptions receiver. Um, the key light set at quarter power uh, and that's set to an 80mm zoom and the fill light is set to an eighth power and that's set at a 35mm zoom just to kind of flood the light outwards um, and as you can see from the setup both the flashes are up high and out to the sides so there's no harsh light on the animals you shouldn't get any red eye or steel eye as we tend to get with badgers um, and we should get an image that is relatively speaking quite flattering with the light um, yet such should still kind of give the effect that it was taken at night. I don't want the images to look like it was in daylight, so we still want that, that darkness in the background. And the ambient, the ambient light is obviously captured uh, in the bulb mode, so we should still get some of that background detail. And then the animals are just frozen by the flashes. So until the morning, fingers crossed, and we'll see what we get. So it's about 8.30 in the morning, on my way back to collect the camera. Uh, we had a dry night as predicted, no, no rain, very light winds. So I'm quite optimistic that we'll, the composition that we set up should be exactly the same, the flashes won't have moved. So potentially we've got good scope of getting some pictures. Um, only downsides are set it up late on yesterday it's only been out for one night the ground is moist so easy to get access to worms and things so maybe we'll get something maybe we won't uh only one way to find out though isn't there so i arrived at the camera trap everything's still in place as it should be but most importantly all the food's gone so we just do a quick check All the flashes are going, so we stand a very good chance of getting some images. Fingers crossed. So we're back home again now. Um, had a quick look in the camera, and we've definitely got images. Images just the badger tonight, no foxes. Um, and one of the biggest problems that I'm facing now is that a lot of my pictures seem to be the badger's back rather than the badger's face. So I think I've got to go back to the drawing board a little bit and think about how I can make sure that the badger's coming towards the camera rather than what seems to be happening at the moment is the badger going into the area where I've put the food down and then got his back to the camera uh, and getting lots of lovely photographs of his bum rather than his, his face. So I think perhaps the fact that it's going into um, a bit of a dead end and there's only one way in, <clears throat> I'm encouraging the badger in but it's got its back to me. So I need to rethink that, rethink that with the idea of the composition and how best to get the, the badger coming towards me. There's some really well used trails around that area uh, where I know the badgers move around from one area to another and I've seen them using those when I've been there in the hide. Um, so it might be that I set it up without any food on one of the trails and hope that the badger walks towards me and maybe that'll give me some better images. But we'll get, the, uh, we'll get the images on Lightroom and we'll have a look and we'll, we'll edit them a little bit and then I'll put those in the video right at the end. So I put this uh, picture in just to show you how I've set the focus for the camera and the fact that I put my bag with all my kit down where I expect the animals to go and focus on the bag and check the lighting with the flashes is falling onto the bag where I want it to. In this image, uh, I thought it was important to show how the ghosting effect can happen when you've got ambient light uh, in the background. And you can see from my left leg, you get that ghosting of the leg 
um, when the ambient light is brighter then the flashlight doesn't freeze it. Uh, put this image in just to show you why it's important that you protect your, house, your, your, your camera. You can see the badges giving it a good old sniffing over um, and my camera trail in the past um, has been affected by this. And here's my final image, uh, the best image on the night. By no means perfect, you can see the badges just leaving uh, the flashlight that I put in place. Uh, but I'm happy with that, still got some ambient light coming through the trees. Overall, a good night. Thank you.